What's good, y'all? Welcome to my review for the final episode of the first half of Tokyo Ghoul or else we're like, no, TGC3. Yeah, as we also know, the series will be 24 episodes. We're getting the second half in the fall. A new, like, actually, little, like, um, teaser image has also shown up online, um, featuring my boy Kaneki, full white hair, and Toka. Now, like I said, guys, this is my kind of, this is kind of working into my territory a little because, like I said, I like I said in my, like, beginning, I have read some chapters to read, you know, chapter 125 and a few, and a few other chapters after that till, like, you know, um, a Kakuja level, to, I'm not going to say who exactly was behind this Kakuja, uh, because I don't want to give spoilers, um, until that happened, and when I saw it, I was like, okay, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm, I'm, I'm done, I'm done, I got my fill of token being can, I got my fill, shit's about to go down, I'll wait till I see this in the anime. So, yeah, uh, yeah, like, so like I said, this is when you're getting my territory, so I'll, like, know little seeds, like, because like I said, and I'll tell you guys right now, this episode, probably my personal favorite of the season, uh, of, of the season, in all honesty, I'm not, uh, because, like, oh, the music was great, the voice I was great, the art animation was overall pretty good, I really dig, uh, how this whole episode was going down, I loved how one particular scene was handled that I knew about, uh, because I heard about it from... Uh, two reviews and some of the uh, <clears throat> previous, uh, when someone was watching some of his chapters, I was trying to get a little bit extra details of what the hell's going down in these chapters when I was watching, uh, when I was reading, read. Because, like I said, I started with chapter 125, blah, 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 blah. So, which, by the way, I guess, which, by the way, I gotta say, uh, the second half of TG, uh, read, yeah, the gloves are off with the Sheeta in this half. Like, the gloves are off with the Sheeta. Like, it's gonna get tragic in some points. I'm telling you guys right now, it's gonna get tragic. It's like shit's gonna go down a lot of shit's going down especially with Kaneki that's what's going down with Fruta I won't give up a spoiler but let me just say that yeah shit's gonna go down like oof 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 like there are scenes I know about from the manga that I'm very curious how they're gonna be trapped for the anime although one thing I don't expect to get adapted like at all is chapter 125 which is of course you know the chapter when Token did finally become canon. I'm not going to spoil what exactly goes down in that set chapter just for the fact that I don't want to spoil you anime onlys that of like, you know, what happened. I don't want to spoil it, but let's just say I don't expect that chapter to get adapted at all. Like I said, I'm not going to tell you what goes down in the chapter because I don't want to spoil you guys, but just so you know that I'm not going to, if they don't end up adapting it, I'm not going to be disappointed or hate Pyra because like, their hands are tied with that scene because... Yeah, I doubt that you hear that show on television. But anyway, I, but let me stop with this. Yeah, like I said, the gloves are off of the sheet at this point. Like, shit's going to go down. So, enough of so enough about Let me just talk about this episode. Like I said, this episode, fucking phenomenal. It was great. So let us talk about it. So we started this off with, we got the guy in the glass, you know, the guy that, I, for, I, I forget his name at all. See, like, you know, he's the guy that's always, like, you know, it's kind of spearheading the operations. He tells like, oh, yes, yes, yes. If any achievements go down, I'll get, ha I'll, t I'll get, like, you know, put your partial credit, which means that's some easy money. Like, and I gotta say, this dude is a straight up asshole. Like, what is this man's beef? Like, I mean, he, like, this man, like, gives zero fucks. Like, he just has, like, zero emotion at all. See, like, so anyway, at, we see Eto, of course, was the one night owl, coming crashing into the helicopter. The dude manages to pull, like, a grappling hook out of his jacket. Like, I don't even know how a guy there, whatever, he, he like, swings, he, like, you know, uses it, gets, like, crashes through one of the windows, um, and I guess overall, the art names, they look pretty good for this, it wouldn't really count, but they were, I think there was, like, maybe one, two shots of the art could have looked a little off, a little bit. Anyway, so he gets in the window, crashes through, and then, you know, he's fine. We then get back to our boy, hi, say. And, you know, we got, we got, you know, uh, then Eto shows up, you know, crashes and slashes him, and he talks about, like, you know, oh, hi, Zay, you're a glutton for, plan for punishment, blah, 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 and tells, you know, Kyrie to get your ass up and finish him off, and then, you know, he just keeps stomping on hi, Zay, and he's all his face, they like, I'm loved, 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 then, we think about the hi, Zay, we're on the checkered floor. We see that little, like, little kid, con white-haired Kondiki, and, you know, so, hey, man, aren't you gonna save me? And then Hayase gets up and strangles the little shit. Like, he, like, he's, like, grabbing his throat and then, like, you know, slowly strangling him, tightening him, you know, strangling him. And he's talking, and we all, and we kind of sit here and say, you know, uh, die, 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 die. I should have died. I should have died. I should have. Which, like I said, which then, of course, leads to the birth of Bloodstained Kaneki. And, or, or I guess the Black Reaper is how it's technically called. Like, I hear people talk about both ways. Uh, Bloodstained goes, like, 
let me tell you this, guys. From what I've gathered on Bloodstained Kaneki, he's kind of like white hair Kaneki Super Saiyan version. Like, he's even edgier. He's, like, he's even more... He's, like, even edgier than white hair Kaneki because, like, you know, he's more depressed. Like, the man Freya wants to die. From these little bits and pieces I've heard of, of Bloodstained Kaneki. Like, hence, like, you saw in last so you also talked when you heard Audio, which I didn't even mention in my review. Uh, Audio must say, like, do you, you want to die again, Heisei? And, you know, this company about die, 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 die. Leading into, of course, the birth of the Black Reaper, or Bloodstained Kaneki, whatever you want to call him. And I love this one scene. It shows this scene of Kaneki's mother beating Kaneki. Because as white hair, the little kid, white hair, Kaneki said, like, you, you were, you were abused for the silliest of things. Now, I could have met a lot of anime, only probably, we were probably super shocked about this. You're like, wait, what? But we, but Kaneki loves his mom. He said he was, she was super caring. Not necessarily. Like I said, like, this is the scene I was alluding to a couple of weeks back when I was talking about, you know, about when, uh, we got high say isn't a fan of, um, Sen Takasaki's works. Because, like I said, like, Ka like I said with his parents, like, and as we and cast and you as you probably know the footage itself looked um, uh, staticky, like you know it was out of focus, like it was kind of glitchy, like you know it's like a TV struggling to get the signal in to really see a channel, because we can't really believe Kaneki, like he's kind of like you, I guess you would say an unreliable narrator because. Kaneki's mental state is not that good. Like as we said, guys, the man got like twenty different personalities running through his head at all times, and so he kind of like um, this is kind of like this now. This is kind of from a little bit of here I've heard of what Chibi said in his videos. Uh, we just know that Kaneki probably you know suppressed those memories a lot, changed them up to where they would look better to you know I don't know help his mental state or something. Anyway, as I like, and I love how this shows because like you know that we can't trust Kaneki. We can't trust Kaneki. Kaneki can't really trust his own memories because. He probably messed with them, or, you know, like, we like we can't trust Kaneki. When he talks with them, like, you know, like, as we know, he saw, like, season one, and then season one, he talked about, you know, how she was a caring mother. But, of course, we see right here, she, we see her beating him. So, you know, she, and he says, like, no, mommy, stop, please, okay, okay. And I think the voice acting that scene, damn good, damn good. The I'm, I'm, I'm hyped to see this episode dubbed. I can't wait to see what Funimation has in store for us when this episode gets dubbed. Uh, but, yeah. I gotta say, but like, I love the, I love how it was filmed. I love how they like, you know, they actually showed it. Cause like in the manga, it was kind of like just a solid, like you know, white page. Uh, from what I remember, it was like just a solid. Uh, it was like a whole page of it, just of the, of, you know, Kaneki's mom having her hand up, ready to slap uh, Kaneki. And you know, we got Kaneki for. I love how they showed up. I love how it looked kind of staticky, glitchy, like you can't, like you know, it's kind of like you know, it's like, it, it's like you know, the signal's not going through all the way. I just love how that was filmed because I really, I love how Para did that as a way to show, like, you know, about Kaneki's mental state and how we just can't trust the man, how we can't, how he can't trust his own memories because, like you said, the man has so many goddamn personalities running through his head. It's probably one of the main reasons why he is a fan of Sen Takasaki's works. But yeah, like I said, that was probably my favorite part of the episode was that scene, and so. Yeah, that like oh man, that scene was I I just I I can't stop, like that scene was just so good, guys. I just oh that scene, Studio Paragon. I feel like even Chibi has to give Paragon props for that. Like even Chibi has to give Paragon props for that scene, like how that was handled. Uh, that will probably, although will probably have like ten different problems with that song. But I uh, will find out when he releases this video. But yeah, Chibi, woo, Paragon, you did good. You did good with that scene. You did good. And so after after we had that amazing scene, we then have white hair con. We have con uh, with the white with the white hair con cute little boy. A uh, kind of a salvation, but like you know, salvation whatever. It's pretty much you know, league into the birth of of. Um, Bloodstained Kaneki, and you know, at the end, I love this scene where he tells like you know, Nighty Night Haize, because like now Haize is pretty much out of the picture now. Haize is no longer the main guy on the steering wheel. He has now been, as we learned, like I like I constantly keep referencing Thor Ragnarok because it's so true. He has now been shoved in the trunk, and now uh, Bloodstained Kaneki has control now. And I love how he said, "Not enough dreaming," which is a very pivotal scene. Now, for anime only, you'll probably never really get what it really means, but for kind of like manga readers like me, and kind of know a little bit bits other pieces about, you know, reading from like, you know, cheap reviews, we know that Kaneki's main goal has always had to be a family. And the stuff he, when he was living with Haize, you know, that was pretty much it. He had a family, you know, with Arima, um, uh, Akira, you know, um, Urie, Shirazu, Saiko, Nutsuki. That was kind of his family. And as we you know, it was pretty much all very dreamlike. Because, you know, he was in control. 
It was Heisei. It was like very dreamlike. Now Kaneki is back in control, or I guess a new version of Kaneki is now back in control. A new personality has been born to where he's like, you know what? Enough of this shit. Enough of this dreaming. I'm back in control, motherfuckers. And I just, uh, I love that scene. I can't, I said, oh. This is probably my favorite because like I said, I'm an, I am a manga reader. I am up to volume 11 of the manga, of course. I know a little bit of the manga. Let's read the, uh, the chapters uh, from Reed. When, you know, I watch Chi reviews his reaction alongside just to help me get, like, extra context about certain scenes to where I kind of understand it a little bit better, but not really because I was still pretty much lost through most of the reading because I was, I was really able to read it from the token incident. But anyway... We see that, and then we get back to the fight we have with uh, Shirazu, Uri, and the crew in there uh, against that ghoul. I think his name was, I forget what his name was, uh, but, you know, we got uh, Shira, uh, Shirazu. He ends up, like, you know, he keeps up, like, you know, more, 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 more. He's wondering what he can do more, so he keeps, uh, like, you know, he, I don't know, I don't know if this is, like, a strip, uh, like, a strip Kakuja he now has, or that's, like, the, excuse me, updated form of his, uh, uh, Cognit. The appearance point pops up this new con, con, uh, cognitive. I don't know if that's like an update ver upgrade version or it's a, or it's a strip Kakuja. But he pretty much where he has like he throws a bunch of missiles at it and then just throw then he just takes the whole freaking thing and just throws it at him. And you know, Shinazu comes in, lands the final blow. We see actually see a flashback um to uh, I'm guessing when uh um Yoshimoto actually ha handed over Eto to I'm guessing Algidi Tree. Uh, cause like if like as you saw Rude, which I know I shouldn't probably be comparing this to Rude, cause it was probably wrong on certain things, but it's like the only thing I can compare it to, cause I'm not, cause I haven't read all of the manga of T G Ryu. Anyway, uh, we see that um, he actually had it over. He was like, you know, he, I called her. Like he said, like I called her Eto, or maybe I don't know if that was. Was that actually? I think that was Joshimoto speaking. Uh, I called her Eto because I expected her to like you know be surrounded by much of love. Ironically, since she's without Kiriji, which we know what Kiriji wants. Uh, so, yeah, there's that, and then, you know, so, like, you know, and then we see uh, Shirazu. He has this giant hole, where we can straight up see the man's skeleton. When I saw him, I was like, God damn, I'm not surprised you can get away with that on TV. Damn! And he then slowly dies, which, I gotta say, art and animations, music, voice acting, oh, greatness, Studio Paria. Once again, phenomenal. I'm very happy to see what you guys can do with the second half, because like I said, shit goes down in that second half. So I'm very if, that, if we can keep this if like if we can keep this quality up for like the rest of season two, or the second half I should say, and you know we get and hopefully maybe chapter one forty five doesn't get adapted. I probably will probably won't get much of it because like, like I said, I'm not gonna spoil it, not gonna spoil it, but. Yeah, like, you know, we see the voice acting, you know, Uriye tried his best to, like, try to keep him alive. Although, I do notice we see, like, I think, I think he started regenerating, but it looked like it was, like, too little too late because he still ended up dying, or maybe not, and he just became, un he just went unconscious, because, I'll talk about that in a minute, because we see something about him later on in the episode. And so, you know, Uriye, you know, Psycho, Muski, they're all starting, I love, and, like, during, and around the end of he says, you know, Hey, why won't you guys say something? Hey, where are you guys? Because, like, you know, he's slowly losing his vision. He's slowly losing his hearing. Uh, the Japanese one, whoever voices Uriya, give that, uh, Shirazu, give that man a raise. Like, ugh. So, voice. I'm, I'm very curious how the, how the um, dub is going to handle this. I'm looking forward to seeing this dubbed uh, by Funimation. But, yeah. Oh, um, we also see um, a little flashback scene between Uri, I think his name was, you know, the blue hair guy that kind of gives Kaneki a little bit of shit. And that was also with, uh, uh he, he, he 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 to me he to you know the pink owl girl I I'm, I'm shit with names also guys uh we see a little fight with them hey which I wouldn't be surprised that was something from like a previous manga chapter that the appearance get they just put back in like they did with uh, Mutsuki and um uh Juzu you know the their little training thing they had I wouldn't be surprised there we all see him he actually tries talking to Fruta. Uh, but he says, like, you know, Mr. Ki, he's like, Kijimasa, Kijimasa, he acts like he's crying, but then when they leave him, uh, he, like, puts his hands down, he has, like, this massive smile on his face, like I said. I'm looking forward to seeing what Fruit has in story, because, like, now that I get context, I think I'll probably, like, you know, I'll probably get a lot more context from Fruit since, like, did, you know, we are seeing this in the anime. Um, yeah, so, so then we have Con uh, Kaneki versus the one up versus Eto, they have the duel, their art and animations are pretty good. And but one thing I met you actually when next thing when we saw a blood and we made try off it return when he made it was real. And actually he takes like a, a like a a pipe or like a piece of the railing on there, pulls up and literally just stabs him in the eye with it like mm. yeah. 
And so, you know, they have their fight. Uh, Kanke actually said he was supposed to, like, protect her, actually, or, like, you know, bring her back. But he ends up, like, you know, fuck that shit. <laughs> he ends up start killing her, slicing her in half, although maybe she might survive that. We don't know. Because she's like, you know, she's like, I love you, Kanke. And then she falls, and he's like, I'm honored. Uh, but where he actually says, after he said, you know, I'm honored, he says, Takagaki Sensei. Which I thought was like, wait, 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 what? So, unless he's referring to someone else by name Takasaki, it looks like that Eto was actually Sen Takasaki's. You know, Kaneki's favorite author. Which means he was also Yoshimoto's daughter. Wow. I, when I heard that, I was like, yeah, wait, what? You know, no wonder, no wonder Reese loved her book so much. <laughs> See, no wonder, I was like, you know what, no wonder Reese loved Saka Takasaki's work so much. <laughs> so yeah, and then we see her, and then we see him feasting on her corpse, just, you know, to, like, you know, replenish those RC cells. Uh, and then, you know, we see, we see, um, Uye, or whatever the dude's name was, he says, like, you know, and, like, Lily, and I love this part, nobody questions his hair color, uh, how it's suddenly black. Nobody. Like, you know, the dude tells, like, oh, hey, uh, what were you doing there? I was like, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 I just took care of them, but they barely escaped. I was just replenishing right here. The dude never questions his hair! I would be like, yo, hi, like, why is your hair all black? Uh, like, and then when he gets to Urie and his crew, Urie still does the question why his hair is black. And I gotta say, Kaneki, you cold, my brother. Like, he tells them, like, he, like, he tells Uriye that, like, you know, oh, so it's my fault. If anything, it's, it's your fault. It's your, if you want to blame anyone, blame your weakness. Like, as, like, as we know, that's why Kaneki, you know, had that white hair edgy look in the in part one. was because, you know, he wanted to protect everyone he was. He would seek power, blah, 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 blah. So, you know, he's like, I was like, my dude, why are you so cold to Uriye? Like, pfft. Like, so, yeah, that's pretty much where the episode ends. Then we have the end credits play after he, like, takes uh, Skiyama. He says, you know, oh, yeah, I'm taking Skiyama. He, like, just throws him off the, just throws him off the roof. Just throws him off there. Kyle Rin comes rushing towards her, uh, rushing towards him. And you know, they have their weird little moment. Like, you know, like, you know, like, oh, everything's okay. Kyle Rin, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Skiyama manages to get away. Kyle Rin ends up crashing down to the floor. I wouldn't be surprised if he's dead. Um, but then... Right when Skiyama's trying to make his escape, these CCG operatives come after him, and then we see these wings. And my soul's like, yes! And it's our girl, Toka. She, along with uh, Chie and Skiyama's father, along with our boy Yomo. So, yeah, the whole crew is back together. And, but if any of you guys are kind of disappointed how little of Toka there was in this, ser in this series, don't worry, she's going to have a much bigger role in the second half. Trust me on that. So and yeah, the first, and then we see as you see um, these the white suits. You know the guy that had that that that, that guy that loved you know uh, Yosh, uh, loved Jason so much. Yeah, we see them actually take Shiranazu's corpse, which makes me think that Shiranazu is actually still alive. He's just unconscious because like I said we saw some regeneration. So I, which unless it was just that other guy that you know that the other ghoul that was with Eto, it looks like Shiranazu might have regenerated, his body might have regenerated enough to where he's still alive, but he's just unconscious for the moment. That's my theory. We may see more in the next one. So we'll probably find out whether or not my theory is true, or they might do like some Frankenstein monster shit with his body or something when we get to the second half of TG in the fall. So yeah, that's where the episode ends. Overall, I am kind of disappointed that they didn't use Unraveled when, uh, with uh, Bloodstain Con, he made his return and he had him face out against Eto. Kind of disappointed about that, but they had, the song they ended up did playing was also fantastic. Overall, like I said, this is one of my probably my favorite episodes of the, se of the, of the season. So overall, I give this episode a 10 out of 10. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram, and Twitter, if you like it. Links are just below. As always, come back for more. See you guys next time.